Hi everyone, thank you for checking out our A-Level History page. Uh, the A-Level that we do is from AQA, it's made up of three different modules. So you'll study uh, the exciting events of Tsarist and Communist Russia and the making of modern Britain. Once you get to A2, you will uh, take part in a coursework research project uh, where you'll look at witchcraft in early modern England. If these options sound exciting to you, then please feel free to continue to watch the rest of the presentation. I'll go through these in more detail. If you have any questions, I'm gonna leave my email address at the end of the presentation. Please feel free to get in touch if you have any questions or queries. Thank you and looking forward to seeing as many of you as possible next year. Our A-level unit is designed for you to cover a period of up to 200 years. You look at a British unit and an international unit that focuses on Russia. You will look at some of the most significant events in politics, economics and social history from the 19th to the 21st century. I'm going to talk in depth about the modules that you'll be completed, but by the end of the PowerPoint you want to know more, you can log on to the AQA website and Google the names of the different modules. They are Tsarist and Communist Russia, The Making of Modern Britain and Witchcraft in Early Modern England. In Unit 1 you will study Tsarist and Communist Russia between the years 1855 and 1964. In Year 12 you will study the attempts of the Tsarist rulers to hold on to their autocratic regimes. The latter half of the course sees the last Tsar, Nicholas II, overthrown by the communist opposition led by Vladimir Lenin. The examined unit is 1 hour and 30 minutes and you'll have to answer two questions worth 25 marks each. This makes up 50% of your AS alongside Britain. In Unit 2 you will look at the emergence of the communist dictatorship and see how Vladimir Lenin consolidated communist rule. You will look at events such as the Russian Civil War and the attempts to transition Russia to a socialist state. In the latter half of the course, you will study the Stalinist dictatorship and you'll see different examples of Stalin's rule of terror. At the end of year 13, you will see a two hours and 30 minutes exam. You will have to answer three questions, which will total 80 marks. This is worth 40% of your A-level alongside the British unit and your coursework module. If you've enjoyed studying Nazi Germany at GCSE, then you'll definitely enjoy Russia. Here are some ways the two totalitarian regimes are very similar. You can see Stalin's use of propaganda. Here is attempting to portray himself as a wise and caring leader. Here are some of the examples of what you will study on the Russia side of the course. The emancipation of the serfs in 1861, a key turning point in Russia's social and economic history. The storming of the Winter Palace in 1917 when the communist oppositions completed a successful coup d'etat and overthrew the Russian government. And Stalin's use of terror. You can see from the PowerPoint that Stalin not only manipulated history, but entirely eradicated his enemies from it. The study of Russia is fascinating, and it's probably something you haven't looked at before. But you will begin to see how Russia changes over time, from a peasant-based rural society behind industrial European countries. So when our course ends, then winning the space race and competing with the USA as an international superpower. In Unit 2, you will study the making of Rosen Britain from 1951 to 2007. In Year 12, you'll start by looking at society and the study of affluence, 1950s post-World War II. You'll look at the fun and glamour of the swing 60s and by contrast, at the end of the year 12, you'll see how Britain faced growing economic and social instability with events such as the winter of discontent and see how Margaret Thatcher was voted into power with a new Conservative mandate to fix those existing problems. The exam specification is exactly the same as in the Russian Union. In Year 13, you will look at the ideology of Thatcherism and see how her economic and political changes shaped society in the late 20th century. You'll look at the two interpretations of Margaret Thatcher and decide the extent that you think she deserves her reputation. You will end up by looking at New Labour and Tony Blair and evaluate how society has changed by the 21st century, looking at things such as multiculturalism and youth culture. In the British unit, you get to look at some of the most significant turning points in British history. 
These include political victories between 1951 to 2007, international disasters like the Suez Crisis or the Iraq War, economic successes and failures, and social change for all members of society such as young people and women. Just like the Russia unit, you'll be able to see with Britain how the country changes over time. From the swinging 60s where the teenager was born and consumerism is booming, to 2007 with Britain at war in the Middle East and on the brink of recession. Hi Year 11, this is Miss Baker and I'm going to quickly talk to you about the third and final unit of your History A level. Your third unit will be your coursework study, or as we call it, your investi historical investigation. This is a personal study based on the question and topic of your choice. It is going to be worth 20% of your A level and it's going to be marked by us as teachers, but then moderated later on with the exam board. We will begin teaching some of the unit at the end of year 12 and you will write it in year 13. We cover 100 years of witchcraft, so let me just talk you a little bit through some of the context. What we've decided to do is we've chosen witchcraft because it's very, very interesting and very thought provoking and there is so much out there for you to read about and learn about so it's quite easy to kind of bring an, an argument together. We have to focus on 100 years, so we've chosen the years 1560 to around 1660, but that can obviously be changed depending on which topic you personally look at. As I said, you will select your own question and we will help and guide you and we've got hundreds of questions that you can choose if you can't think of one. We've also got a dedicated library, um, we've got hundreds of resources, so you will not have to just go off and write your own essay, you will be guided by the history team. What you'll be looking at kind of over as an all is the increase and decrease of the witch craves in across Europe during the 16th and 17th century. We focus on England and Scotland um, but we also look at other countries such as France and Spain but in particular Germany where there was a massive increase in women getting basically killed or burnt at the stake for being witches. What you need to do is you need to say why that happened. Now there are many interpretations out there, many historians have wrote books on this topic. A lot of the interpretations include religion because obviously in the 16th and 17th century there was you know there was Catholic and Protestant countries, the belief of Satan, the belief of the devil, the belief that you've been tempted by the devil and obviously that and we look at the kind of foundations of that. We also look at the elite. We look at the fact that the people who are in charge who were doing the trials and the torture and the executions were from the upper class and were mainly men. We look at the social economics, we realise that during the time of the 16th century when there was any poverty or famine or war, because we've had the English Civil War at that time, women seemed to be getting targeted and there seems to be kind of a spike in women getting persecuted for being witches. And that leads to the other one of feminism as well. That whole argument of why is it mainly women in England and Germany, then in other countries, such as your Scandinavian countries, it was a lot of men who were being persecuted and being tortured and executed, etc. So you've got a massive range of reasons and different interpretations of why there was, you know, this witch hunt craze happening in modern Europe at the time. What you need to do is you need to basically say why. Um, and you choose your favourite kind of argument and you just run with it. As I said, you'll get a chance to research historians and interpretations and you get the kind of chance to take your own independent study and these are vital skills that you're going to need, you know, not just throughout your other A-levels but also if you continue your further education at university or apprenticeships, etc. A lot of the skills that you will be required for your coursework you are going to learn in your Russia module, which is Unit 1H, and your Making of Modern Britain module, which is in the 2S. I hope that's um, been a little bit informative to you. Thank you. Bye. It's really important that you spend a long time thinking about what A-levels are right for you. But here are some reasons why you should choose A-level history. If you are passionate about history and its importance as a subject, and have enjoyed it at GCSE on track to achieve a grade 6 or above, then history is the right subject for you. If you want to study a highly valued academic subject where you get to learn about politics, economics and the study of people and human behaviour, 
you enjoy analysing evidence, debating and forming your own arguments, then this could be the subject for you. You will be supported by a fantastic team who have got lots of experience teaching these highly enjoyable units. So what skills will you be developing in your worry level lessons? You will learn to critically analyse sources and interpretations, evaluate evidence and use it to support your own judgments, to debate confidently and substantiate your opinions, and to research independently and communicate complex ideas. All of these skills are transferable and highly valued by all university courses and future employers. History is a highly regarded academic subject by all universities and will not close any doors for you. So if you're thinking, where can history take me? It can take you absolutely anywhere you want. History degrees themselves are incredibly popular, but history is the number one subject to pair with law. It can also help you in the pursuit of other subjects or careers, such as journalism and publishing, government and politics, economics, English, sociology and psychology, business accounting and HR, as well as archaeology and museum work. Our previous A-level students have gone on to study a range of subjects at university, including medicine and law degrees. Our students have studied at a number of universities across the country, including Oxford, Manchester and Keele. Whatever you decide is the right path for you, your history teachers will do whatever they can to support you. Why did you choose A-level history? I chose A-level history because I believe that the teachers here were so intricate and had such good teaching methods and it really made me enjoy the lessons like there's no two lessons that are always the same there's always something different going on um so when i get, got into a levels like having a thorough teaching process always helped me to enjoy the lesson as well as get good grades in it i have a genuine interest in the past i like learning how certain monarchs such as elizabeth queen elizabeth have helped shape today's society and i enjoy certain lessons such as miss coming up with a we're starting, they're starting, because it was so practical, it helped me understand it further because it wasn't just like a boring lesson. Even though it was a bit cheesy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what, what's the lesson like for you, Elsa? What have you enjoyed? I really enjoyed the British module. I think my favourite's probably been learning about the flat shield, although I don't like her. <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like learning about the impact that she had and how she kind of just destroyed everything really. <laughs> <laughs> You've um, learned about, about lots of different Prime Ministers haven't you? Is, is there anyone who you're quite surprised by who you've not heard of before? Half of them I haven't heard of before but now yeah. I feel like educated in that matter. Yeah. And I think it's very apparent to today's society as well and when you're watching political movements and you're watching the news you understand it so much more and you see a lot of trends and like patterns and you understand so much more about the world you live in. Yeah, and it also isn't like, it's not all professional as well, like we had this one lesson about this um, John Profumo affair, about like this drug dealing like sex scandal, so it's not all like boring. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> the Profumo affair is, is quite shocking, isn't it? Yeah. Lots of uh, yeah. saucy uh, details about political history. Okay. And uh, what are your plans for the future? I want to go on to study sociology in... Um, university and then after that um, do a GDL and become a lawyer and I feel like history is so like predominant in law because it's always you know looking at the laws looking at the legal system and what effect that had on society at the time also looking at the norms and values of society throughout history and how it changed and how how it continues that's really good and it's, it's good to know that history is the number one <coughs> subject that's uh, paired with law so that's that's great for your future um, I'm doing a in joint English and history degree at university. I feel like I'm well prepared for university because my teachers are giving me lots of help with my personal statement, like putting my personality through so that I basically have a chance, as well as my grades obviously. And um, I feel like I'm well prepared because they have a better understanding of the overall subjects and I feel prepared for upcoming challenges. I want to study English and history in uni to hopefully become either a history journalist or a political scientist. I think learning about the history of Russia and especially about the history of communism, um, I think it will help me to prepare for like political views and stuff.
What is the uh, the average uh, history lesson like for you? I think it's very interesting because I feel like there's a lot of political debates and like social debates and it's never like the same thing and there's so much topics that are always you know relevant today and if it's the past it's like you can always apply it to your life in some form. Um, I like doing critical analysis interpretations like we did one whether it was judging whether it was fair to give Stalin the nickname the Red Tsar and I found it interesting to learn about his ideology and why he did the things he did. I think it's really interesting, especially with the coursework module, it allows you to research independent and um, form your own opinions and your own views and argue that and back it up with evidence, which is just what history is.